guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Welcome to Elevate Church. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I personally love about our pastors is they are potential diggers. In other words, man, they know how to dig the potential out of someone. They're quick to see it. They see it when no one else can see it. When you're looking at the person next to you, you think, there's nothing about you that I can see potential. They see gold. And I love that about them because tonight they have given the opportunity to four special people that they have truly seen an enormous amount of potential in. Four people from this house who love this house, who have accepted the challenge to grow, who have accepted their place in this house, and they truly, truly love Jesus, and they love seeing people come to Jesus week after week. And so they're here every Sunday. They're serving their hearts out. Um, we just love them. We love to see what God's doing in their life. And so we get to hear from them tonight, and I know you're going to be blessed. We're going to be talking about um, a cuss word in the church called faithfulness. <laughs> and I'm going to let them explain that. They're going to define it for you. They're going to talk all about it. It's going to be wonderful. And so get ready to be blessed. And Without further ado, help me welcome the very first speaker of tonight, Miss Anusha Kumari. All right. So, faithfulness, right? Um, when we were first given this topic, it was being faithful to God's vision before your own. And so, when I was first given that topic, I was thinking about it, and naturally, your brain goes to your call, right? Like, okay, if I'm being faithful to God's vision, it's because he's called me to do something. At the end of my life, I'm going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful. So, it's like, okay, I got to be faithful, and I got to do things. Um, so, as I was prepping, and I was asking God, okay, what do you want me to share? He was really revealing to me, hey, uh, my vision for you um, and your faithfulness is more than just doing. And so that's what I want to talk about today is like what else, is, what else does God have a vision for us? Um, and so to do that, I want to go over the story of Jonah. But before we go to our verse, I really just want to outline it for everybody um, so that you know who Jonah is. And so Jonah is an Old Testament prophet. He is called by God to go to Nineveh, which is an enemy camp. And God says, go there. Let them know that impending judgment is coming. And Jonah decides, you know what, God? I'm not seeing eye to eye with you on this. I don't want to go there because I know that you're going to be merciful. I know that, you know, you're going to relent. And so he decides, I'm going to do the complete opposite. I have better vision than you do, God. I'm going to go the opposite direction. And so through a series of basically unfortunate events, uh, Jonah ends up coming back, and he fulfills what God's called him to do. He decides he's going to be faithful, right? Um, and so in doing that, the people of Nineveh, they actually, they're saved. They repent. They come back to God. Um, and it's supposed to be, you know, this really epic moment because, you know, genocide is not happening. It's people are saved. And so you would think in a, a perfect world that Jonah would say, oh, my gosh, like, you know, God, that's why you called me to be faithful to your vision. That's why you asked me to do this. Um, but instead, we see in Jonah 4, 1 through 4, and I'm reading from the NLT, it says that this change of plans, so God relenting his anger, that's the change in plans, greatly upset Jonah. And he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about this. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew you were merciful and compassionate, God. Slow to get angry um, and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. And park it there really quickly. You would think that he's complaining about all these negative characteristics about God, right? But he's like, God, you love people so much. You always are faithful. How could you do these things? And so it's awkward because you're like, wow, what, what is wrong with this guy here? Um, and then he goes on to say, just kill me now. Like, he's not dramatic at all. Um, Lord, I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry about this? And so, again, what should have been, like, this triumphant moment of people being saved and, you know, 
Jonah just being happy that this isn't happening, it really turns into literally an entire chapter of this guy like having self-pity, he's angry, and he wants to kill himself, basically. And so it's sad because Jonah was faithful. God told him, go to Nineveh and speak. And he did. But in this, he was not faithful to who God called him to be when he was doing what God called him to do. And so I want us to go ahead and look at this chart that I created because it's going to show us Jonah's version versus, versus God's vision. And so in Jonah's vision, when he was looking at his identity, he's like, I'm an Israelite. So that means that I'm better than the people of Nineveh. But in God's vision, he was saying, Jonah, you are my representative. Jonah's vision, when God called him to go, they both had the same um, understanding. Go to Nineveh, proclaim God's message. Great. They knew what the call was. But in Jonah's vision, the outcome of the situation, what he saw in his natural sense, was I wasted my time and I want to die. Whereas God saw, you rescued a nation from eternal separation from me. And so that's why we are called to be faithful to what, who God has called us to be. So it enables us and it calls us to be faithful to what he's called us to do. Otherwise, you're going to miss it completely. And that happens in church all the time. You'll be doing, you know, I'm tithing, I'm serving, I'm, I'm doing all of these things. But there's brokenness in you. There's unfaithfulness in you. There's um, that you don't want to move forward and do what God's called you to do. And it's because you're not, dressing your, you're not addressing your heart. And it's crazy because when we look at this, it's like God's vision is great, right? It's like, why would we choose our vision instead? And so when we look at that, it's because there's doubt that creeps in. There's fear that creeps in. Or there's a lack of understanding. And we have to come to the place where we understand in the Bible that God calls us to have childlike faith. When you have childlike faith, then even if your vision isn't the way God sees things, you will say, okay, I don't see it that way, God but I'll be faithful because I believe your vision. I'm coming like a child, and I'm going to say, okay, God, I believe you. But instead, in the church, we choose to have childish faith, and we have to distinguish between the two. I will be childlike. I will not be childish in my faithfulness to God. And so I want to go over four quick steps as I'm wrapping up here on how to be faithful to God's vision before your own. The first one is accept God's authority. Point blank, if Somebody can have, like, the best message in the world. And if you don't accept God's authority, then you're going to miss it completely. You're going to miss it every single time. You have to come to the place where you understand that God's vantage point is an advantage. He can see beginning and end. So if his vision allows for that, why would we choose to be unfaithful if he's calling us to do something we don't understand, something that we fear? We can say, you know what, God, I don't see it the way that you do, but I'm choosing to submit to your authority, and I will move forward into what you've called me to be. Number two, it's get in his word. If you want to recognize God's voice to hear his vision, you have to expose yourself to the things that he says so you know what's God and what has to go. Number three is you have to write it down. Um, Habakkuk tells us to write the vision and to make it plain. The thing with writing it down is that you will forget all the time because life is going to happen. Distractions are going to come. Um, I actually was in the process of buying a house, and it was just stressful and painful, and I didn't want to do it anymore, and I completely forgot why I was doing it to begin with. And luckily, my brother pointed out, like, hey, aren't you buying a house because of X, Y, and Z? And I was like, oh, man, like, I should have I should have written that down, because when life happens, you forget your why. You forget what God's called you to do and why he's called you to do it, so write it down. The last one is partner up. We just finished an entire series of called Better Together. If you haven't heard it, jump on that podcast, jump on live stream, go listen to it. But the right people, when they're around you, they're going to call you out when you've missed it. They're going to hold you up when you've fallen, and they're going to celebrate you once you've reached it. And so you've got to partner up with the right people. So as I'm wrapping up, I just want to invite everybody to just close your eyes for a minute and have a moment with God. Maybe as you're listening to this, you're thinking to yourself, like, man, I've missed it in, in this area of my identity. Or maybe you're, you're realizing I might have missed it in multiple areas. And I just want to remind you that there's nothing or nowhere you could have gone through or done that God would say, I'm through with you. The gifts and the call of the Lord are irrevocable. He will never take that from you. And so just release that area to God right now. God, we thank you that you're faithful, even when we're faithless, Lord. Thank you for having vision for every single area of our lives. Reveal to us where we've allowed doubt, fear, 
or pride to cloud our ability to do what you've called us to do, Father God. We're saying yes, and we're being faithful to you, Lord. In your holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we give Anusha a big hand of applause? Wow. I love it. Man, she just came out swinging right between the eyes. She said, I love that childlike. We need to learn how to be of childlike faith, not of childish faith. Do I have any childish people in here? Trick question. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thank you, Anusha. Thank you so much. All right, so this next speaker we have, love this man so much. He, he has been a, such a brother to me, such a friend. Uh, this man is, is gifted like nobody's business. Let me tell you, passion like is his middle name. Uh, he, he, he loves God, and you're going to see that as you hear from him. He loves the Lord truly, but more than anything, he's also a lot like Anusha. They love seeing people grow to learn about God. They love seeing people come to the realization of who God is. And so please help me welcome the second speaker of tonight, Mr. Benny Gideon. Man, Pastor Anthony, you got to come with me everywhere because that's just amazing. All right, guys, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, go ahead and throw up the scripture story. So guys, I was reading, and God put together a scripture story for me to tell you guys, and then we're just going to go from there. So scripture story goes like this. There's a way that appears right, but in the end, it leads to death. Because in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. For a person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So that's going to be our foundation. I realize that when God has a vision for our life, a lot of times it doesn't look good. But truthfully, it is good. And I'm just going to be real because you guys are my family. And I just want to talk from my heart. But last year, the Lord and I dreamed the year together. And the year we dreamed was titled, My Year of Full Submission to God. Be careful what you dream for. So last year, I was supposed to get married. But my vision and God's vision didn't line up. And for the longest time, I was angry. I was confused. I was distressed. I didn't know what was going on. And the more I sought God about it, the more I realized that his vision for my life had everything to do with my call and not with my preference. And God isn't as concerned with your preference as he is with your call. Because a lot of us try to go outside of God to fulfill what only God can do. And part of being faithful means being committed. And so if we want to see the promises of God, we have to be committed to them on our end. I think the biggest thing that I learned out of last year was that in God's promises, we have something to do with that. We have a part to play. And so I obviously didn't get married. This is a pinky ring. And, um, <clears throat> but all the anxiety and the distress went away, and I had peace. And I have peace now, and I thank God for that. So, again, God's plan doesn't always look good, but it always is good. A couple things I want to tell you about. In the scripture story that we talked about, it was all about a path and all about a choice. And God always gives us a choice whether we're going to live his vision or not. Because for God to force you to live his vision is not love. And God is love. So there are two reasons why we choose our way over God's plan. Shout out to youth because that's the series we're in. <laughs> Reason one is because we love someone, something, or ourselves more than we love God. That's one of the reasons why we choose our way over God's. And a second reason is because we honestly don't trust him, even though we sing about it all the time. A life lived by the spirit of God requires faith in the God that the spirit testifies about and obedience to him and his word. We have to have that. We have to be obedient to the Lord. And I was praying and the Lord reminded me of something that he told me years ago, but it was for this house. And God was telling me that he's like a pregnant woman waiting to birth a child, but he can't birth the child because it doesn't want to come out yet. And there's so many blessings and miracles and peace and joy and fulfillment that God has for you, but you're not giving him the steering wheel, so he can't birth it over your life. 
And I'm saying this in love, guys. I, I just told on myself. I'm not saying this to, to hurt anybody. I'm, I'm telling you why the miracles aren't coming when you're praying for them. I'm telling you why it's taking so long to get to point B. If we knew that God was driving us to a lane of blessing, a lane of fulfillment, a lane of joy, a lane of peace, all these amazing things, we'd probably give him the steering wheel. But the truth is we don't know where God's driving us. The scripture just said, God, I don't, I don't know where you're taking me. How can I understand my way? That's where faith comes in. And that's where faith full comes in. See, faith isn't a one-time thing and it's like, peace out. Being faithful to God's promise is from the moment God spoke it all the way till it comes to pass. And we need to do that. We need to be faithful with God the same way he's faithful to us. Can you guys imagine praying to a God that didn't answer? Well, how does God feel when he talks and his people don't talk back? We always want to play this blame game with God. I'm, I'm telling on myself too, but how many of you guys have ever asked the question, God, why do you allow this to happen for whatever? If there are not hands everywhere, y'all are lying to me. But it's okay. God forgives you and so do I. Well, as we're asking God, why did you allow this to happen to me? God's asking us the same question. Why did you allow this to happen to yourself? And it's again because we don't love him or because we don't trust him. But if we know that God is good, then we would. We would trust him and we would love him. Last scripture I want to share with you guys is Galatians 6, 7. And I didn't give it to the media team, but it's just from me and you guys. It says, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So I plead with you as my brothers and sisters in the faith. I plead with you as children of God and as someone who's been through hell and back too many times. Please follow God's vision for your life because other people are depending on it. Thank you. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Come on, Benny. I love that. Love that. So proud of you, man. So excited to hear from you tonight. So our next speaker we have for you, love this guy as well. Um, if you look up the word passion right next to Jesus, you'll see his big old smile. Uh, because this man is all over the place. You've seen him here rocking out on stage. Um, but let me tell you, as hard as he rocks out here is as hard as he works in the kingdom of God. He loves, loves. He has a passion, I should say, and a heart to see men rise up and take their place. And so you guys get the privilege of hearing from such a, a powerful, powerful man of God. My friend, please help me welcome Mr. Stephen Hopkins. What's up, guys? So if you can go in your, into your Bibles, uh, James 1, uh, verses 2 through 6. We'll, we'll read that real quick. It should also be up here on the screens. Um, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your face produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. So I've been standing on this verse probably what seems like a year now. Um, I've even got it uh, as my phone background just in case I start acting up and getting a little attitude and start getting funky. Um, for example, this actually happened, um, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going to demonstrate it for you. <laughs> this sucks, God. <laughs> Why can't I afford to buy a new guitar? Oh. You know what, God? I choose joy in this situation and to trust you. You laugh, but that happened. You can ask my wife. Where she is. She's right there. You can ask her. She had to deal. Well, she got the opportunity to deal with me in that season. And I know it's petty. Don't judge me. Don't act like you guys haven't been there. You know, you crying to God about that new Chanel purse that's just so cute. Or the all new Toyota Tundra with the lift kit. Listen, I don't know what you like, okay? But God's dealing with you. He's dealing with me in our own ways. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, I'm accepting donations in the back after service uh, for my guitar. No, no, no I'm just joking. Um, I'm very blessed with everything God's given me. I'm very grateful for all of that. Um, but, you know, 
a lot of the time, it's not so much about the physical items. Um, at least for me, uh, it's usually a promise that God has given me that I want to be sped up to fit my timeline because I've somehow convinced myself I'm suffering. Um, so what I kind of take from this, actually, in verse 6 uh, in James, uh, it says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And I've also got a little quote here as well that uh, God kind of gave to me while I was praying. Um, and it says, if I am walking in faith, then I will not be moved. So let's just say that with me. One, two, three. If I am walking in faith, then I will not be moved. Let's, let's say that one more time, but like declare it and mean it. If I am walking by faith, then I will not be moved. All right. Now to say it is one thing. But to live it is a little more uncomfortable, and it actually took me a minute to figure it out, um, what that may look like. And it, actually, it may look different to you, but uh, let me try to explain it. So um, I got tired of complaining all the time and being this wave that just gets pushed left, gets pushed right. Um, so I decided, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to take that, uh, that first step of faith. Um, and to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. Zero clue, you know? So I did it. And I was like, okay, God, you're going to take the next one. And even then, I'm just kind of pretending. I'm just going with the flow of things. Um, you know, in each step I took, like I said, I just thought I was making it up. But I think in the beginning it's supposed to look like that, especially as new Christians. And as we take that first step of faith, you know, we, we, our, our minds can't really comprehend faith in the way that God wants us to at first. Because we're so used to seeing what's real and what's in our face, you know, what we can, what we can grab. Um, but as I kept walking, boom, boom, each time this little bit of confidence would raise up in me. Confidence, confidence. Um, you know, and sure, I fell. I fell sometimes. I still fall. Now, I'm not perfect. Um, you know, I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm 24 and married. Uh, which is a lot younger than most people should be married. So, you know, we're both figuring it out as we go. But the beauty of, of this path of faith that you walk in is it teaches you how to handle those situations. Um, now, I want to take you real quick to 1 Peter 1, chapter 22, or chapter 1, verse 22. And it says, Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls, and this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express that sincere love towards one another, passionately and with a pure heart. I'm actually going to read that again because that's, that's amazing. Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls, and this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express this sincere love towards one another, passionately and with a pure heart. All right, I'm, I'm going to break this down for you just in case you, you aren't really receiving what is that. Now, because of your obedience to the truth... That's simply walking in faith. That's you accepting God's word, word as fact, as true. The second part, you have purified your very souls, and this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. Now, faith is no longer a mindset. It's a way of life. You've now conditioned your soul to understand what faith is, so it's not just something you can't see and grab anymore. It, it, is, it is you walk in it. Yeah. Yeah. You understand who God is, and that shines through you to everyone around you. Now, the last one, and this is the hard one. So express this sincere love towards one another passionately with a pure heart. That's what I'm doing right now with you guys. But see, a lot of us get stuck on part two. We experience God. We're obedient with God. And then God's like, go! And we're like, what? Not happening, man. <laughs> you know, but why? We, we do that all the time. But it's like, why would we do that? God has so much for us, you know. Why would we put a lid on the capacity of, of, of how much we can grow for God? You know, and when you do that, you start to get in these, uh, these reoccurring seasons. Um, for instance, how many of you have felt like you've been in the same situation over and over again? Just be honest. It's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's honestly because God's just trying to get your attention. He's trying to be like, hey, 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 why are you doing that? Stop. Listen to me. You know, and we have to be willing to take that step whenever he asks. We have to be willing to move forward because that's the only way he's going to grow us. Um, you know, I'll give a quick example here. Um, I'd say last May, yeah, last May, my wife and I, um, we went to this, this class that uh, Elevate Church used to put on. It was called Welcome Home. 
Um, and it essentially talks about the future of Elevate and everything that they value, um, which is actually now called Elevate Life Tracks, uh, which is pretty much the same thing and more. So I recommend to, that you go through it. If you haven't, it's an amazing journey. You get to figure out who you are with God. Um, but I remember in the class, um, they talked about how there's a church opening up in Clarksville, Tennessee. My wife and I both were just like, Poof! we both looked right at each other and we we're like, that's amazing. And I don't, if you guys don't know anything about us, we're from the Midwest, born and raised in Illinois. Um, hey, what's up? No, <laughs> um, no, you know, born in 217 forever. Sorry. Um, no, we're, we're, <laughs> we're born there. So our family's really close. So once we heard that, um, immediately right after we started, we, we got together in the car. We're like, well, we're moving to Tennessee. Um, you know, so we had, we made all these plans. We told our family and everything, but around July, I hit this season of just discontent and just uncomfortability with that decision. And I kind of ignored it and it passed, but then again, it happened in August, but this time it drove me into a depression. My wife and I weren't talking. Anytime someone brought up the idea of me moving, I get so, so angry. But see, that's that reoccurring season I was telling you about. I put a lid on the capacity of how much I wanted God to grow me. I experienced him, was obedient, and then I said, all right, I'm going to go do my own thing. Bye. You know, but it came to a point where I had to have that uh, realization that I never went to God with this idea anyways. You know, so I decided, you know what, you know, I'm going to stay here. You know, so I stayed. And in that step of faith, and I like to think about Peter when this happened, you, Jesus told him to step out of the boat. He took that step. And boom, he's on solid ground, but it's water. Takes that another step. Imagine how stoked that guy was. He's like, whoa, water, you know. But then as soon as he looked up and looked away from Jesus and saw all the waves crashing around him, he started to sink. So what I'm saying here is, yeah, sometimes it, it's not going to be easy, even when you take that first step. But Jesus is always going to be there to pick you up, and he's always going to be there with you. So thank you. All right. Come on, let's give him a bigger hand for making his debut here on a Wednesday night. Such a great word, man. That was such a great word. You're speaking at LV Men. <laughs> hey. hey. Such a great word. That was so powerful. Um, everything about that. Are you guys enjoying this? Such, such different perspectives, such, such different insight. And, and let me tell you, none of them are speaking from a place they've never been. They're all speaking from a place that is something they've experienced, that they've grown from, that they've learned from. So you're getting nuggets of gold here. You're getting true, true wisdom. So we have our, our very last speaker of the night. And let me tell you, uh, this next person, um, it's, it's very, pretty interesting. But as much as I thought I would be in the place of inspiring this person by our relationship that we've had, it's actually been quite the opposite. And I have been so inspired. Um, I, I learn all the time from them since this person was like eight years old. Um, I was being taught lessons like like how to look someone in the eye when you're talking to them or they're talking to you. And, and, and I'm telling you that he's bold, he's courageous, he's confident, he's not afraid to speak the truth in love. Uh, he's not afraid to stand up for what he believes in. He's completely unashamed for Jesus. So please help me give a warm welcome to our very last speaker, Isaac Ruiz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I love that. They got my face on there. Awesome. It's pretty sick. Okay, stop taking my time. Um, nah, I, I, I like to be funny when I talk, so I'm actually going to tell you a story about faith, and it, and it really, I lived it. So, I don't know if you noticed, but I just did a liver cleanse, and I lost like 20 pounds, so yeah. hope you noticed. Woo. Yeah. No, but it, go, it goes with the story, okay? So I just did a liver cleanse, right? And I, was, and I was on it, and I was like, I need to lose more weight. Like, because, you know, I struggle with diabetes, okay? So, you know, me with my weight, it's a constant struggle, like, all the time. So I'm like, you know what? I need to start working out. Because ever since I stopped playing football because I was injured, I needed to find something to fill that gap. And we have beautiful people at this church who were like, hey, you should try cycling. I was like, cycling, okay. Yeah, I was like, well, all right, I'll do it. Right, so I get there, I'm going to the gym, and then they're like, hey, do you want water? And I was like, no, no, I like, I'm acting all bad. Like, hey, I don't need no water. You know what I mean? And, and I'm going, right? And I go in the class, and there's just a bunch of women in there. And I was like, cycling? Like, 
okay. So I'm like, I'm going to mount up on my bike, right? And I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. Like, yay, you know, lose weight. Okay. And, and I'm going, right? And, and then the guy's like, hey, this is this buff, big black guy comes in. And he's, the gym, he's like the leader of the cycling class. And he gets on his bike. And he's like, all right, time to warm up. Boom! It's just like he's like he's like put on the put on the resistance already. I was like, what the right? So no no no, you you th you think it's funny? Okay, his warm up is like oh my god! I thought I was running in like freaking Arabia. Like I was like sweating. Okay, and I'm like going. I'm like oh my god! Like I'm already like going. I'm already sweating, right? And I'm like, oh, I wonder how long it's been. And I can't see the time thing. And I'm going. I'm cycling. I'm like. Oh. I look at the time thing, five minutes. And I was like, what? <laughs> five minutes, right? And then it was, it's been 15 minutes. He's like, guys, that was a great warm-up. All right, let's start our second warm-up. And I was like, what? Okay, so I'm going. I'm still cycling, right? And I'm like, I'm like looking at my partner. I was like, can I have that water? <laughs> I'm drinking the water, right? And I was like, I can't drink this all, right? I drank it all, okay? I drank it all, right? And I'm still, I'm still cycling. I'm still going, right? And then... I'm sweating so much. I run out of water. I'm like, trying to catch my sweat. <laughs> trying to go. I'm, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Just to make you laugh. I really didn't do that. But I was, I was, I was bad. I started seeing black spots. And I was, I was about to pass out. Like everything in me. All my sides were crying out. <laughs> right? Okay, so you think it's funny. Laugh it up. Okay, but that's exactly what faith is. Okay, I came to that class. I had to sign up. Right? I had to sign up. I had to do a signature. This guy gets hella people. Right? So I'm like, I did my signature. That's faith. You, you come, you sit in the seats today. You, you came here, right? You're sitting here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was weak, man. <laughs> no, but you're coming here. This is your cycling class. I imagine every single seat as a, as a bike. Okay? We're all sitting here. We're, you could be serving. It's beautiful, right? It's comfortable, right? But in my class, the thing is I haven't told you yet is that I started slowing down, right? So I'm cycling, and I started slowing down. What does the instructor do? He gets off his bike. <laughs> he comes up to me. He's like, he's like, don't you dare slow down. Don't you dare slow down. And this is when I was about to pass out, okay? And he's like, don't you dare slow down. Give me more, 30 seconds, all you got. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like going. And then he walks away, right? And he's like, any one of you, you want to quit on me? Go outside. People from the back row started leaving. Okay, but how many of you know a lot of your friends in church who have left when they were been pushed too far? That's exactly what cycling was for me. And when they told me talk about faithfulness, I was like, what? That's exactly what church is. That's what cycling was. I signed up for it, and I need to be faithful with it. Because you're going through pain. I felt pain. Who's felt pain here before? Who stubbed a toe, anything, I don't care. It could be emotionally, physically, we've all felt pain, right? So in that class, I had the option to leave. In that class, I had the option to give up and quit. Pain, that pain lasted for a whole hour, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you this. Pain may last for a minute, an hour, a day, or maybe stretch out a part of a year. But if you quit, that lasts forever, Quitting isn't, isn't a, just a moment. It is a characteristic. And I told myself, when I was cycling, I could be dying. I could be like going, oh, my God, I can't do it. No, no, I, I, I did it. And did I get a pat on the back from the, from the instructor? No. No. But I'm glad he didn't. Because then I would have felt, oh, little old me got rewarded. No. No. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start doing this now on. I, I said it. Make fun of me. I'm going to start doing it. It beat me up, but I'm going to keep going back. And that's what we need to do with God. You're in, you're in pain, get a reward from it. Get a reward from it. You know what was my reward? I got a little bit more healthier. I lost a little bit more calories. Did I get like a six-pack and look like the instructor? No. No. But it's a process. Faith is a process. And if you begin to say, hey, I'm going to quit. I can't do it. You're never going to get there. And it says in Mark, in Mark 8.34, then Jesus called the crowd and his followers to him. He said, any of you who want to be my follower must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given uh, to you for following me. 
That's exactly what faith is. If you're not willing to carry the cross, you're welcome to leave the class. Faithfulness will cause you to do more. Faith causes you to get uncomfortable. I love what he said. His name's Wendell. Okay, and he said, hey, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put a tattoo his name on my chest. No, <laughs> but he said, guys, he, he goes through the row, right? And he's like, he's like, everyone, everyone, youth. He's like, everyone, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. But what else did he say? When he saw that we were all hurting, when he saw that we were all in pain, he got on his bike, right? He's like, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. And that's what Jesus is doing because, you know, he already carried the cross. He already did Calvary for us. And he's saying, I got you. This man has been doing it for years. This is, he, when he was talking to us on the mic, he sounded like he wasn't breaking a sweat. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to start, you know, moving in the intervals. And me and my... <laughs> That's what I sounded like. But I finished that class. What I'm trying to tell you is will you finish your class? Will you finish growing with God? Because it's a funny joke, you know, hearing about this, but how many times do I see people like that in church? Youth, we've, it's crazy. Some of us, we've lost friends. In high school, it's hard. Some of us don't have all of our parents. You either have your mom, your dad. That could happen to anyone here. We can all give an excuse for why and why not. I could too. There was way fitter men than me in there. Shoot, man. And they were like 40. Breaking no sweat. Me, I'm like 19. (laughs) We all have excuses. Let's just lay them out on the table. But what will you do at the end of the day? What God's looking for is, yeah, sometimes we've all quit. Sometimes we've all jumped off the bike. But that's not what really matters. What matters to God is what you do from that moment. Are you going to get back on that bike or are you going to walk outside of that class? That's what God wants from you. That's redemption. That's what God gives us. The ability to always get back on the bike. And will you take that today? Will you? It's up to you. But I'm saying as a church, let's get on our bike. Let's all go and let's, let's cycle for Jesus. Let's get on our bike. Amen. Come on. Can we give a nice, warm, elevate welcome to all of our four speakers? Wow. 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 That was a whole nother level of dynamic. Wow, guys. Seriously, did you guys get anything from tonight? Like, that was just so rich and so real. And, and honestly, thank you guys for sharing your heart with us, for sharing truth with us for for bringing for not holding back what God has instructed in your life Uh, I know that it it takes sometimes you having to hear from someone else until something clicks right right if you're married you know what that means like your wife tells you something over and over but you don't get it until your friend tells you all all the wives like "Mm." right sometimes it takes hearing another voice to, to for it to click and, and, and I know that a few things clicked tonight for me. I don't, I don't know about you, but a few things clicked. And, and, and it's such a, a great experience when we get to hear a fresh perspective on what faithfulness looks like. And so I, I, I want us to, to truly take tonight's message and truly accept that challenge that was presented to us tonight. To, to look at faithfulness as no longer something that, that is just God. But faithfulness that is also a character of who you are. See, God is faithful. God will always be faithful. We're the ones that need to make the decision on whether or not we want to be faithful. And tonight, I think we have a lot of, of wisdom we can draw from and we can really practice and we can really, really exercise in our life in order for it to really become who we are, not just something we do. Amen? Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.